Okay, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Evan Foster and I am the Center Board Member for the Attleboro Land Trust. Um, and welcome back to another episode of the ALT's live series on Facebook, all about land conservation and protection in the city of Attleboro. Uh, today's guest is Ben Cody. Um, so Ben has been an active member of the Friends of the Ten Mile River and Buckland Brook nonprofit organization that aims to support and improve the Ten Mile River. Um, today he's going to discuss some of the restoration projects that the group has undertaken and the positive effects that they've had on the river's health, along with some ways that you all could get involved with this work. Um, so if you have any questions during um, Ben's talk, feel free to put them in the comments section and I can read them out um, to Ben. Um, yeah, so with that, I'm going to hand it over to Ben um, and you can start start talking about your work. Okay. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Um, so Friends of the Ten Mile and Buckland Brook uh, is a nonprofit organization um, based out of the Ten Mile River and Buckland Brook watersheds. Uh, the Ten Mile River being the larger of the two watersheds that we take care of, uh, 54 square miles, uh, and it includes the city of Attleboro, uh, which seems to be where we are most active. Uh, Buckland Brook being a little bit smaller, um, seven or eight square miles, which begins in South Attleboro and flows into Pawtucket. Both of the streams flow into the Seekonk River, which is part of Narragansett Bay. So our organization, Friends of the Ten Mile and Buckland Brook, started as just Friends of the Ten Mile back in 2018. I want to say it was May. Uh, and many of our members were, were made up of people that were involved in other organizations. I started my advocacy of the Ten Mile River about 20 years ago when I met up with a group called the Ten Mile River Watershed Alliance. They were based out of Attleboro and they existed alongside the Attleboro Land Trust from the early 1990s until the early 2000s. And then it kind of fizzled out when I when I joined, um, it was kind of on the decline at that point. Um, so our group is made up of some of those members that were part of the Watershed Alliance. Uh, Don Doucette and his wife, Nancy, are both on the board of directors for Friends of the Ten Mile and Buckland Brook, and they were longtime members of the Ten Mile River Watershed Alliance. So our group is new, but the roots go back a long time. Uh, our group grew very quickly. Our membership is, our Facebook presence is in the thousands and our actual membership is in the hundreds. So there are many people that are interested in the 10 Mile River, which is was a big surprise to me because being a kid growing up in Pawtucket, it was all about the Blackstone River and we didn't really hear much about the 10 Mile River, although I knew it was there. Um, so there's a lot of interest in the 10 Mile River. We don't charge membership fees. Um, we rely on donations and we would rather have people come out, get some hands involved, um, get some bodies at those cleanups and walks and whatever else we do. Our, our goal is to have fun and to make a difference. If you're not having fun, it's just not worth doing. So we try to make all of our events fun. So when we started, we started with a historical project in Attleboro, and it's one that's persisted until today. Uh, we've taken on the Dodge Family Cemetery, which is located on Dodge Hill Pond at about the halfway point of the river. So for the last few years, we've been cleaning that up and uh, clearing out a lot of the trees that were in there. It was really, really overgrown. Uh, and, and I'm happy to say that this past May, we were actually able to start putting some headstones back in place. So that's how much we've gotten that cleared out. And we offer tours of that. People always ask, where's the Dodge Family Cemetery? So we offer tours down there every now and then. They're usually pretty well attended um, because the history is something that everybody seems to be into. Everybody wants to know what happened in the past um, and why certain things are there, like the Dodge Cemetery, which is a great surprise in Attleboro to a lot of people. We've also built partnerships with several other organizations, uh, the Attleboro Land Trust, Massachusetts Rivers Alliance, Museum at the Mill, to name a few. We also act as an umbrella organization for another watershed group, 
um, just to our south, the Runnins River Watershed Alliance, which formed last year. Uh, we work in partnership with them and we help them out on their river and they help us out on our river too. So that's also a great partnership. With the Attleboro Land Trust, we, uh, we help out with Larson Woodland, which is located in the center of Attleboro, uh, just above the center of Attleboro on the 10 Mile River in Mechanics Pond. So that's kind of like coming full circle too, because the 10 Mile River Watershed Alliance uh, was involved in the acquisition of Larson Woodland, and they were involved in the management of Larson Woodland. Uh, and in fact, the name of that organization is still on the sign. So we came back a few years ago, acting as site stewards for Larson Woods. And one of the biggest things that we're doing there at the moment is removing invasive species along with the land trust. Uh, we have a little section located near the road that we've cleared out um, of invasives. <laughs> One of the other things that we're working on now uh, along the lines of invasive species is we're working on the water chestnut issue in the 10 Mile River. The 10 Mile River is severely affected by this invasive species. If you pass by Dodgeville Pond in the summertime, you're probably not going to see water anymore because the pond is completely covered with this green plant that grows on the surface. And it's, it's really bad for the water. Um, so starting this Saturday, actually, we have two dates this month that we're going, we're going to pick a pond and we're going to go just start pulling those water chestnuts out. And that's in partnership with uh, the Rhode Island DEM. So the pond that we're doing is actually the Country Club Pond in Pawtucket. So it's going to work. We're going to have a few different teams. We're going to have teams out in the water and they're going to pull the chestnuts and bring them back to shore. We're going to have a team on land that's going to take the plants away from the water, and we're going to compost them in the uh, 10 Mile River Reservation, which is nearby. <clears throat> hopefully, uh, hopefully it works well. Fingers crossed we haven't done it yet. Um, but this is actually a big project for us, and it's, it's very involved. Um, so we've been coordinating a lot. Uh, on the board of directors on how this is going to work. So fingers crossed that this is going to be successful. It's not going to take care of the problem completely. Uh, the two biggest affected bodies of water in the watershed would be Dodgeville Pond and Central Pond further downstream. Dodgeville Pond is, is going to require some professional work, um, but I have been speaking to uh, a girl named Samantha, who is Gary, the owner of Dodgeville Mills' daughter, and uh, hopefully there'll be some more conversations coming about what we can do with that pond, um, because the pond is a big asset to the mill, and as I said, we work in partnership with Museum at the Mill on a lot of levels. Uh, we kind of lost touch a little bit because of COVID, but uh, we're starting to make that connection again. So we would like Dodgeville Pond to be clear of that terrible, terrible plant at some point in the future. Uh, the dam there was just recently repaired too. So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff in place um, to keep that, you know, for recreation. So hopefully the water chestnuts go well. Uh, in addition to that, we hold several cleanups a year uh, in different parts of both the 10 Mile River and Buckland Brook watershed. So we're constantly hauling garbage out of the rivers, out of the woods. Uh, and those are usually, you know, they're, they're fun. They don't sound fun. And I, I got to say, you know, cleanups might not be for everybody. We do have people that don't clear, they don't care for the cleanups too much. Um, but they are necessary. And, and for the most part, they're fun. Uh, we have businesses that donate trash bags and other supplies to us. Uh, one of the businesses that has been very helpful is Uncle Tony's Pizza in East Providence. They will donate any trash bags or just about anything we need for a cleanup. And we've also made contact with the Cozy Kitchen in Attleboro. Hopefully we'll be building that partnership in the coming, uh, this coming season, hopefully, um, because we still have several cleanups left. Uh, so like I said, we clean both water, we clean land, we clean cemeteries. We spent the month of May honoring veterans, um, as we do every year. It, it's just another 
another community service that we do. We went to Oak Grove Cemetery in Pawtucket a few weeks back with Ken Possel, who's very involved with the Blackstone Valley Historical Society. And we flagged every veteran's grave in honor of Memorial Day. It took us three hours. We started with quite a few volunteers. And by the end, there were just three of us left as people started to drop out because it was a, it was a very involved day where I was taking out old flags, putting in new flags. Uh, and the history of the area is, is very important along with the environment of the area. So we try to incorporate both. And, uh, you know, we just want to make sure that we leave the watersheds a better place for our kids. We encourage recreation. Uh, we support the hike Attleboro movement from the Attleboro Land Trust, and we're looking forward to partnering with that, being present at the hike Attleboro Day. We also lead guided walks on the river or along the river. We have some coming up in June. We have an after work walk, and I want to say it's June 23rd at 6 or 6.30, I, I can't think off the top of my head, but uh, uh, we're going to be going from the Attleboro Library. Last year we did it. It was very well attended, um, you know, as much as it could be with the COVID restrictions. Everybody had to wear a mask, and we walked from the Attleboro Library upriver to Larson Woodland where we showed off the work that we were doing with the Land Trust. Uh, this year, we're going to go the other way. So we're going to start at the Attleboro Library, and we're going to head downriver, um, following the new river walk that's down there. And uh, we'll turn around at Olive Street. And Don Doucette, who I mentioned earlier, he's a huge asset to that because he knows just about everything there is to know about the history of the Ten Mile River in the Attleboro area and beyond. And uh, he adds so much knowledge to those walks. I, I don't know what we would do without him there. Um, and he stations himself in various points along the trip and he will give information, all sorts of information, anything you wanna know about the history of the area. And uh, it, it's always a really, really great time we encourage people to come out. We've partnered with the Land Trust on walks uh, because the Land Trust also leads many walks throughout the years, uh, throughout the year rather, I'm sorry. So it, uh, it makes sense for us to, to meet up and do it together. So it's about, it's about conservation of the river. It's about being the voice of the river. Uh, we take things personally when things don't go well on the river. We uh, celebrate success on the river. Uh, if a new open space is is uh, preserved, you know, we really like that when good things happen. Um, and we're just encouraging people to get out and enjoy their own backyard. You know, you don't have to go to New Hampshire or Maine to, to see beautiful things. There are beautiful things all around us all the time. Um, Attleboro has a lot of beautiful spots. And it's not just, you know, Oak Knoll in Attleboro Springs, obviously are great spots, um, but the Attleboro Land Trust has many properties and and cemeteries offer a lot of great open space and we, we celebrate all of that. Um, we act as the voice of the river and uh, that's basically what our mission is and why we exist. So we try to make a difference and we try to have a good time while doing it. So I encourage anybody that wants to get out and see the river to join us. And we're always welcoming new members. Uh, come out and see us on the river. So we're gonna, I'm going to just ask you a few questions, if that's okay. If anyone else does have questions that they want to ask, um, then feel free to put it in the chat and I can read them. Um, so yeah, let's 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 get to my questions before we we lose connection again. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm wondering if you did talk a little bit about kind of the importance of protecting the Ten Mile River. Do you, do you know any kind of like specific maybe plant species or animal species that kind of like rely on the Ten Mile? Um, yeah, do you have any insight okay. onto that? All right, yeah. Um, so uh, 
we've been wa- I've been watching wildlife on the Ten Mile River for uh, for the amount of time that uh, I've been involved in it, and uh, that's a good question. Um, the animal life. Let me talk about that if it's okay. Uh, yep. I remember when I first started with this, uh, being in New Hampshire, and uh, I saw beavers out on the Pemigewasset River. And I remember thinking, you know, there will never be beavers in, in the 10 mile river. Um, mm-hmm. and, and it turns out I'm wrong um, because I have seen them a few times. So beaver use the 10 mile river, um, which is very exciting to see them coming. Uh, what's the other thing? The, um, oh man, I can't think of, oh, otters. Man, didn't come to me. <laughs> I've seen otters several times on the 10 mile right. river and they're really fun to watch. Very difficult to get pictures of. Uh, but the first time I saw an otter on the 10 mile was probably about 10 years ago uh, behind the Attleboro Elks Club. And it came swimming right up. And since then, I've seen them all along the 10 mile from Attleboro down to uh, East Providence through Pawtucket. Um, so they're out there. Uh, coyotes have come back and they're not a natural species to our area. Um, one of the things I see a lot of times online is, is, is a lot of people are very concerned about coyotes and somebody will mm-hmm. chime in and say, well, they were there before us. So I, I appreciate that way of thinking that I do like having the coyotes around, but the truth is they actually were not here before us because they are not native to this area. They came in afterwards. Um, but they do have a place here. Uh, and as we know, they will raid your trash can. Um, <laughs> But they're important, you know, and, uh, and and it's great to see them around. We have all sorts of bird life. Um, I actually just recently discovered uh, a heron rookery, and I am hmm. not ready to get out the location of that right okay. now. Uh, but it will come. So there there is one in the uh, 10 Mile River watershed. It's actually the lower 10 Mile River watershed in Pawtucket. Um, so that was very exciting to see. Uh, so there's cool. all sorts of things. A bear on the loose in the 10 mile watershed recently um, that wow. we shared to our Facebook page. Uh, driving by the Kentucky Country Club just the other day, I had a herd of deer run across Armistice Boulevard, going from Slater Park to the 10 Mile River Reservation, following mm-hmm. basically the bike path as they go along the river. So um, we have an abundance of wildlife here in in urban watershed and 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 that's great uh that that says a lot about the health of the area awesome yeah that kind of i think leads into the next question which you kind of touched on but do you want to kind of you want to talk a little about about the connection between healthy lands and healthy water systems i know you've been talking about you know focusing on the 10 mile river but within that work there's a lot of stuff that is done in the you know close vicinity um, on the land Yeah, good, very good question, actually. And uh, I think I take for granted sometimes that everybody knows what a watershed is. Mm-hmm. Um, that might not be the case. So the 10 Mile River drains an area that is 54 square miles. So every drop of rain that falls within that area, which includes the towns of Plainville, North Attleboro, Attleboro, Seekonk, Tucket and East Providence on the main stem of the river, plus some towns that kind of are out to the sides. So in that area, uh, the rain that falls will actually wash into the 10 mile river and then onto the bay, which is the bigger watershed and the Atlantic Ocean. So everywhere you are, you're in a watershed. The water that falls there, the rain that falls there is going to go somewhere and be drained somehow. Mm -hmm. Um, So that leaky car that that leaves oil on the street, that is actually going to wash into a storm drain and wash into a river. It doesn't just disappear. I think, uh, you know, the sewers to us, they're kind of, not so much sewers, but the storm drains that are are under Mm -hmm. the streets, they're kind of out of of mind. And a lot of those flow unchecked into a, a waterway. Now, they are being improved and we're kind of getting awareness on this now. Um, but let me talk about Buckland Brook, for example. Buckland Brook is a stream that is completely buried, mostly in Pawtucket. Um, and all of the wetlands, everything has been stripped from there. And it, it goes by McCoy Stadium right into the bay. Uh, and one of the things 
at the very end of that stream, it comes out from underground and it flows above ground as it flows into the bay. And one of the things that we've been watching is during a rainstorm, and it doesn't even have to be a heavy rainstorm, you go to the mouth of that brook and you watch, and it's a flash flood. The water is pouring down that, that stream bed and just going mm -hmm. unchecked into the bay. And with it is everything that is being washed off the streets and mm -hmm. all the land in that watershed. So as an example, you know, that's, that's what happens. The rain will wash everything down. So mm -hmm. we, you know, some people, you know, you might think like your lawn fertilizers, your, your leaky car, things like that um, don't affect the water because we're not on the water, but that is not mm -hmm. the case. Um, every, every bit of land is, is washed into a waterway somewhere and Definitely. everything we affects a waterway. You know, you want the greenest lawn. Um, I'll be honest. My lawn is not the greenest lawn. Um, I don't use any kind of pesticides, uh, not pesticides, but chemicals, for that mm -hmm. lawn um, because I know that it will affect a waterway and you can get algae blooms and you can have all mm -hmm. sorts of water quality issues um, even if I am not right on the watershed uh, right on mm -hmm. the river or... so every everything everything affects the river right yeah and this is um, we actually had a talk with uh, Nick Wiley who's the conservation agent for Attleboro a couple weeks ago and he talked a lot about this. So I really encourage folks to go, if you are more interested in how you can really make an impact at your own home about reducing your the runoff into rivers and that sort of stuff, I encourage you to watch that that interview as well. Um, there's certainly a lot of things that we can do um, and really should do, um, but yeah. So I wanted to sw switch over a little bit to a different topic, which is kind of your relationship with um, the Attleboro Land Trust. I'm curious if you wanna just talk about how that's kind of grown over the years and how important, you know, these types of relationships with other organizations are for, you know, the uh, success of the work that we all pretty much do, which is very similar work. Yeah, um, so I remember uh, about two years ago, um, like I said, we're members of the Mass Rivers Alliance and mm -hmm. they came down to see us and they came to Larson Woodland as the place to visit with us as, part of their organization and we had the Attleboro Land Trust with us and the person that came down from the Rivers Alliance was very very surprised that we work so well together mm. um, the partnership with the Attleboro Land Trust is just so important because like you said we are on the same page with a lot of things and I'm proud of the fact that we work so well together. Um, and not, you know, it's it's not everything we do, they do everything you do, we yep. do. It's, it, that's not how it works. We, 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 we keep in contact and we partner on a lot of different things. Uh, I, I can't imagine, um, it's, it's like, you know, right hand, left hand. I, I can't mm -hmm. imagine not knowing what another one is doing. Um, and I mean, it would make it so much more difficult to get things done in the city of Attleboro. You know, the land trust is about the land. We're about the water, but the land and the water, as we just said, uh, are connected. It, it's all, it's all the same. So, uh, the partnership between friends of the 10 mile and Buckland Brook and the Attleboro land trust is a great partnership. And, uh, one of the most important ones that we can possibly have. Um, because the impact is just, it, it's, you know, just twice as good because you have mm -hmm. the two organizations. And I think the Watershed Alliance and the Land Trust, as I said earlier, you know, they had a bit of a partnership too. Um, mm -hmm. But I hope that we take it a step further and I hope that it continues to grow, uh, you know, as time goes on. Definitely. Yeah, I think that's, um, yeah, you really spoke to the importance of you know, banding together in the name of protecting, you know, natural features and waterways and, and land. Um, uh, yeah, that, you know, the, the land trust, we're always, you know, looking for more um, volunteers and getting people involved. And I think, you know, a really good way to do that is to partner with other organizations to really pull from both sources and help each other out. Um, so actually, yeah. So going to that kind of volunteer side of stuff, I was wondering if, 
what, what the best way for folks to learn about volunteer events would be um, for you guys? Do you have on your Facebook page, on the website, is there a good place for people to go? I would say that the Facebook page is probably okay. our most active source. Uh, I know we have an Instagram, but I don't, I don't have anything to do with that. That's one of our members. But Facebook is very active. They can find okay. us at Friends of the 10 Mile in Buckland Brook. Great. And I can, um, I think I'll put that in the chat right now. So if people want to go to it, you can definitely follow them and stay up to date with all the projects and volunteer events that that's going on. Um, great. So I, I think, uh, I think we're kind of wrapping up here. I want to ask one more question, which is more of a, I guess, personal, personal question of, you know, do you have any like favorite memories or do you want to talk to maybe about why you're kind of passionate about this work? Um, anything like that, maybe a favorite memory of the 10 mile, anything like that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I have, I have so many memories, uh, yeah. so many of them, but I mean, there's been high points. Uh, I'll speak just uh, this organization. Um, mm -hmm. one of the best things that we ever did, uh, was a, a walk with the land trust actually, um, two years ago, uh, know your watershed. Um, and we went through Larson Woodland and we went up to the confluence of the 10 mile and Bungie rivers. And, uh, when I think back on events, that one, you know, um, members of the land trust were there, members of the friends were there uh, that one really sticks out, uh, because I think that was really, I would say that was really the start of the partnership between, uh, our organization and your organization. So that, that does stick out as a really, really great moment. I was very, very proud of that. And uh, when it shows up in memories online, I'm still very proud mm -hmm. of it. That was, I, I hope that again. That's great. Yeah, definitely. We'll definitely try to try to organize more events like that. And yeah, keep collaborating. Um, great. So is it, I just wanna, is there anything else you'd like to add before I kind of wrap up the show? Um, yeah. No, I just, you know, thank you very much for having me as a guest on here. Um, I really appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing, you know, what we're going to do together in the future. Definitely, yeah, um, yeah. So thank you so much for that uh, presentation. It was really great, and I think we all learned quite a bit about about the work that you're all doing, and it sounds really amazing. Um, yeah. So there's a couple things I just want to mention um, before we wrap up. So you had actually Ben had actually mentioned about hike Attleboro, Attleboro Day, which is officially announced for July 17th, and it's going to be based at the Richardson Nature Preserve. So I encourage everyone to put that into your calendar. Um, and I know that Ben will be there. I know I'll be there. And yeah, so I encourage folks to, to attend. Um, I also want to let people know that we do have previous episodes saved to our, for this series, saved to our ALT Facebook and YouTube channels. So definitely check those out if you haven't. Um, and if you are interested in being a guest and are associated with land conservation in Attleboro, you can reach out to me using the email, which I'll put in the comments section. Um, so yeah, thanks again, Ben, for your presentation. We really Thank appreciate you. it. And thanks for everyone for joining us. And I'll, I will see everyone next week for another episode. Thank you. Great.